Have you ever used Nina to orient your telescope toward a target, then tried to focus on that target and found that it would not come into focus for anything? Let's take a look at a case study and observe how to fix it. I'm going to start off by pointing my 81mm Williams Optics Refractor at the Leo triplet. This is a group of three galaxies, all spiral, roughly resembling our Milky Way. They are far enough away that we can get all three of them within the frame of the telescope, but close enough that they occupy a good portion of the frame. Now, galaxies are so far away that, as far as our camera is concerned, they're gaseous, they're like clouds. And by and large, this doesn't present a problem, not for guiding and not for aligning the telescope. You can see here as I'm using Nana's Sky Atlas and framing features to line up the telescope on these targets, that the software is easily able to handle rotating the telescope toward the target. And once we're oriented toward the target, it'll take another quick sub to confirm its position, play solve just fine, and make its orientation just perfect. The entire system works, in fact, just fine until we get around to trying to refine our focus on the galaxies. Now, if Nina wasn't focusing before you ever pointed at a given target, if it wasn't focusing on just stars, you might have some other issue going on with your, your focusing device or the application or the cables or something. But if it was focusing fine before you pointed at a certain target and then you pointed at the target and then Nina refuses to focus, the problem is very likely that there is diffuse light coming from the target, and you're going to get this in certain nebulous regions. You're also going to experience this if you point the telescope at a galaxy that occupies a significant portion of the frame. And right now, Nina just is not very good at, at recognizing what is actually a star that you might want to focus on when you're looking at such targets versus what is gas or haze that will not be able to sharpen up in the focusing procedure. All right, so my telescope, which is sitting on a Skywatcher EQ6R mount, has completed slewing to the Leo triplet. Before I could even commence that slew, I had to plate solve so that Nina would know which way the mount was pointing, therefore which way it had to move. And to plate solve, I've already had to do an initial focus. That initial focus went just fine, but the Leo triplet is low on the horizon in another part of the sky. So before I actually start taking subs, I want to run another focus routine. And here's where we're going to run into problems. So in this case, what you're going to see is that Nina is going to appear to run successfully through the entire focusing subroutine until it gets to the very last step, which is going to fail drastically. Sometimes when you point at a hazy or nebulous target, it'll fail all the way through the focusing procedure. And sometimes it won't fail at all. Some nebulae don't seem to bother Nina all that much. But in this case, I know my focuser was working because I was able to focus perfectly when I did the initial plate solve and sync. That's how Nina figured out which way the telescope was initially pointing when I booted up the scope and allowed it to then point at the Leo triplet when I slewed. And now suddenly it won't focus. And this tells me the problem is created by Nina or Hocus Focus inability to handle the hazy galactic detail that it perceives in the subject, the Leo triplet, which is occupying a large portion of the frame. We're three steps in and the focus routine is still going well. I have the camera running eight second exposures at a gain of 250, which on my Player One Uranus C is a fairly standard gain. It's a good compromise. It, it gives me a good boost of signal and reduces a lot of read noise. The night is well below zero. I think it's minus eight or nine Celsius, or it will get to be that later on during the night. So I don't really even have to worry about thermal noise. But overall, the camera is doing quite fine every step of the way. But watch what's going to happen at the very last step. We're just a few seconds from it. Hocus Focus is continuing to test a number of different views, building up its estimates of the ideal focus point. And up to now, everything seems to be going really well. I already have my sequence program, so as soon as Nina tells me it's good to go, I'm ready to hit the play button and start recording my target. We all know that feeling. We're ready to get that sequence rolling and know our image is being captured. We can go off and do other things, feeling successful, feeling like we've accomplished our goals. And here we are on the last exposure to finish it all up and then BAM! Focus failure. 
Now I have Nina preset to retry focus twice. Sometimes it'll find focus on the second attempt, but with a large failure like that, I also know that it's extremely unlikely. I also know that the image sequencing routine will attempt to find focus, and if it doesn't find focus, it'll default to the last good focus it had, which was when I plate solved when I booted up the system. And that isn't going to work, because when I booted up the system, I had the telescope pointed at Polaris, which at my latitude is about 45 degrees up, and far from where the Leo triplet will come over the horizon. The lower in the atmosphere our telescope is looking, the more the atmosphere will refract light, which affects focus. So before I start filming the Leo triplet, I really want to make sure that I have a new, fresh focus done on that target. I'll just speed up the procedure so we can hurry up through the second attempt. The problem is, Nina can't really tell, or Hocus Focus in this case, can't really tell what are stars versus gas and haze that it cannot resolve. It's getting confused by that. And this can happen when you point the telescope at any large diffuse body. I experience this particularly when I point the telescope at large nebulae that occupy a good portion of the field of view. And pretty much 100% of the time when I point the telescope at a large galaxy that, such as Andromeda. Now you could struggle with your telescope all night if you wanted to, or you could switch to manual focus and bring the stars into the best resolution possible, which it's time consuming and a bit annoying to me, but it can be done. But as an alternative, there is a very good and simple workaround, especially with Nina, since it allows us to quickly and easily change the target of the telescope. What I'm going to do here is pop back into the framing wizard and retarget the telescope to a point just left of the Leo triplet, just a few arc seconds from where it was previously pointing. I'm just going to get the Leo triplet out of the frame. Now the telescope is just pointing at stars, and then I'm going to run the focus routine again. And I'll just say again, I'm using Hocus Focus. I think Nina itself without Hocus Focus would work just fine. I used to use Nina without Hocus Focus, but Hocus Focus these days is just so fast and reliable. To me, it is a Nina essential, just like the three-point polar alignment. It is something that just makes things so quick and smooth and easy and convenient. Why do without it? And just use Hocus Focus at the default settings. So the mount is going to slew just a few arc seconds off the Leo triplet, and it's going to take an eight second image and check its plate solving just to make sure it is in the correct place. And once that's done, we'll have the telescope in a direction of the sky where there is no gaseous material to interfere with the focus routine, and we can run the focuser again. All right, our slew is good. Let's start that autofocus routine. Let's see if this time it works. And now, running Hocus Focus on just stars, you'll see that Nina works fine. And this is because it's no longer being confused by the diffuse light that we saw in those galaxies. Awesome, perfect focus. Now, we're going to go back into our framing tab, readjust our image to center on the Leo triplet, and then go ahead and commence shooting the sequence. I have about five hours left till nautical dawn, so that's enough to gather a good amount of data. I'm not sure what application you're using to control your mounts and camera, but with Nina, this is a simple procedure. Once in the framing tab, all I have to do is drag the star map of the Leo triplet back into the center of the frame and tell Nina to slew the telescope back to target. It'll take a few seconds to slew and about eight more seconds for it to take another image, a few more seconds to plate solve. And while it's plate solving, I'll just go ahead and touch up my imaging sequence, and we're ready to go. This is a pretty basic DSO template imaging sequence that I created earlier. I usually shoot 5 minute subs on dim targets. I like gain 250 for most targets with a player 1 camera. And it will check focus every 12 frames or once per hour. And if PHD2 should lose guiding for some reason, say a, a cloud passes in front of the target for a few minutes or even a few hours, as soon as stars are reacquired, Nina will automatically plate solve and make sure the telescope is pointed in the right direction and correct the telescope's orientation to recenter the target in case the mount drifted any while the telescope was unable to guide. But those are all topics for another video. So if you find yourself having trouble bringing a target into focus, if it's a nebulous target or a galaxy, 
Just slew that target just out of the frame, focus on the stars, and then re-slew back to your target. Since you're not making a major move focusing someplace far away across the sky, the focus that you settle on is going to work just fine for that target. And generally with Nina and Hocus Focus, I find that once I have achieved a good focus, later on in the evening when Nina attempts to double check its focus, the double checks work just fine, almost always. And if they happen to fail, Nina will just default back to that last good focus you made, and it will very likely continue to work just fine. In fact, here's the outcome. This is the Leo triplet. Having spent five hours filming it, it came over the horizon at about 12.30 a.m. where I live, and I started filming it at about 1.30 a.m. There was unfortunately a 95% full moon that night, so I had to use a dual band filter to maximize the signal to noise ratio. I know I'd have gotten a better image had I been able to go more broadband, but you work with what nature gives you. So to recap, if you know that your focuser is working and all your cables are good, you were able to focus earlier, plate solve, all that sort of thing, and you only just started having focusing issues when you aligned on a gaseous or hazy target. Just slew a few arc seconds off, get the haze or gaseous material out of the way, run your focus routine, and then slew back onto target and begin shooting your sequence. Now get out there and shoot the sky.